Hello and welcome, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar about creating the perfect flow for your WordPress application. Uh, today, uh, in this quite rainy day in Poland, uh, together with me, I have uh, Bartek Nowak from Polish uh, agency called Awesome Studio. Uh, Bartek, tell us a few words about uh, yourself and the company you work at. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, so as Maciek mentioned, uh, I'm a technical lead at Awesome Studio which is an uh, agency based in Łódź, Poland. And uh, I'm working there since 2018 and as a technical lead for about four months. Uh, I'm working as WordPress developer since 2013. So I guess that uh, we will show you today some magic uh, about creating the perfect flow uh, okay. for WP apps. Yes, and uh, tell me, in, uh, in which does... Uh, awesome Studio specialized. Do you make uh, mostly themes, plugins? Okay, so we got clients all over the world and uh, we are specializing in creating uh, fully customizable themes for our clients. We are also making plugins uh, and etc. Everything connected with, with WordPress. Okay, thanks. And uh, I, I am Maciek Palmowski. I work as a WordPress ambassador here at Buddy. And uh, I think that's all about me because uh, I am not the star of today's webinar. So uh, before we we continue, uh, if if anyone has some questions, feel free to ask them either using uh, YouTube comments or using Facebook comments because we are broadcasting uh, on, on both channels this time. Uh, so with this out of the way, uh, Bartek, let's start with Awesome Studios technological stack. Um, let me guess, you are not this type of company that just installs uh, vanilla WordPress and then just uh, downloads Elementor and clicks the whole website. Yeah, uh, we are not using uh, vanilla WordPress, as you said. Uh, we are using Bedrock. And Bedrock is a tool used to change file structure uh, and to use Composer to, to pull files from a remote repository. So uh, this approach allows us to have our GitHub uh, repository really small and um, our developers can cloud this repository quite easily uh, when they are joining, uh, joining the project. So uh, if you want to see how it works, maybe I will share screen with you. Of course. And as you can see uh, here in my PHP storm, uh, this is completely other file structure than uh, vanilla WordPress. So we do not have a WP config, a PHP file. Uh, all uh, definitions uh, are being set up in .env file. So maybe you could show us the uh, env example because I know that in your uh, yeah, env yeah. file there are passwords. So <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, we can enter DB name here. Of course, everything that uh, needs to be entered uh, as in WP config. Uh, you can uh, define uh, ACF proxy as well. Uh, so ACF will be updated and downloaded uh, with your composer then. Uh, so as I mentioned, we got composer JSON file here, uh, which is uh, required to pull all plugins and uh, the core of WordPress. As you can see here, we got WordPress in version uh, 5.8 and it's being downloaded here to web directory and WP. So we can update it with uh, Composer, etc. cetera. Uh, all plugins uh, are being downloaded from uh, WordPress uh, packages, which is a uh, quite a fun tool in my opinion as well, because the only thing uh, you need to do, maybe I will show you how it works as well, is open a WordPress packages uh, site and enter Slack of plugin that you want to download. For example, let's uh, search for Worker, which, which is a manage WP plugin and helps you doing backups and managing plugins uh, from, from there. And as you can see here, Worker has a few versions here. Uh, and if we want the latest one, just select the 499, copy this line and paste it right here. So um, after typing uh, Composer install in your terminal, uh, the plugin will be downloaded and moved uh, directly to your app plugins. Uh, so it will be available in your WordPress. Okay, so uh, as, as I understand, thanks to Bedrock, you can have uh, 
a new developer can create uh, a working uh, environment of the, of the project uh, in a matter of minutes, right? Yeah, that's true. Uh, they do don't need even to type this in terminal. We created a bash script for this, so uh, it's it's only uh, running the bash script to to download everything that uh, that is required. Yeah. So uh, as everybody know, de uh, developers are are lazy. So this is one of the perfect example uh, how we can use this laziness to. Uh, to make everything work better. Uh, okay, so uh, what else apart from uh, Bedrock are you using? Okay, so uh, we are using Timber as well, uh, which allows us to use Twig templates. And that uh, approach uh, gives us possibility to separate uh, logic, uh, a part of views files. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, Front-end developers and back-end developers can work asynchronously and uh, create applications much faster. Okay, so maybe could you show us some uh, some example of? Uh... Okay, uh, I got it one here. So, for example, this is how uh, looks single case study, which is our CPT in in our WordPress. Uh, so, as you can see here, a Timber is rendering a view that we have here. And we can pass PHP variables with adding them to the context, which is then uh, passed here. And um, it's using a render method here. Uh, so if you will pa uh, pass, for example, ideal light color, color background, it will be available right here. So yes, and, like uh, yes, and we, we can see uh, that uh, Timber is using a bit different syntax. It doesn't use the typical PHP uh, syntax, but it's using this uh, mustache, mustache one. Yes, yeah. uh, I think this is this is much clearer, and uh, it's quite similar to the syntax we can see in a few other templating languages uh, that are uh, available not only in PHP. So, so, so this is also kind of a, a more universal approach. And um, tell me, what about Gutenberg? Uh, are you afraid of Gutenberg, or did you decide that uh, you will use Gutenberg and uh, you will uninstall Classic Editor everywhere? Yeah, so we are not the type of agency that are installing uh, what you see is what you get editor uh, every everywhere. Uh, we are trying to to use Gutenberg, of course, uh, to to use it and to create uh, new blocks. We are using ACF Timber Blocks uh, library, which you will probably know. <laughs> Uh, and uh, that's uh, that's quite easy because you can create new blog with just a few lines of comments. And um, let me show you how it looks like. Okay. So it looks like that. Uh, so probably the only line that you will uh, need is the title here. Uh, and all files, uh, all tweak files created in views blocks uh, that uh, got this title comment line. Uh, will appear in your Gutenberg uh, editor in, in WordPress dashboard. So of course, if client wants to have uh, a classic editor, we, we can install it, but we will recommend to, to use Gutenberg in, in this case. OK. Uh, also, I, I must admit that it's uh, really nice to uh, to see uh, when when the guest of your webinar is showing the uh, library that you wrote by by yourself, it's it's really nice, and I'm I'm really happy that someone is using it. So, so yes, probably I will keep on updating it, uh, if, if, even for for Awesome Studio's sake, so so you can have uh, yes, <laughs> uh, okay. And uh, when we are talking about technological stack, I will have one more small question. And what do you think about the WP CLI? Do you yeah, use it? So, do you like it? Yeah, uh, all of our developers are having WP CLI uh, installed locally. And uh, we are using it for uh, search replace, uh, doing search replace in database. Uh, this, this tool will, um, does it quite, quite good. We are using it as well for exporting and importing uh, databases to, to specific environments. And uh, that's quite powerful tool. So you can, for example, wipe all the posts or install or uninstall plugins. So, so that's quite quite fine. In this yes, case. yes. I, I, I really like the, the power of uh, wiping out everything. It was quite useful uh, to, to, let's say, restart some, some, some WordPress and uh, 
and test something again and again. Um, okay, so I think we know a bit about your technological stack and uh, let me just uh, repeat that if you want to ask Bartek any questions, feel free, you can use it uh, either YouTube or Facebook comments. It's up to you and it depends uh, where are you watching us. Okay, so let's go to the next step. Uh, because uh, yes, we know your tax tech, but uh, tax tech, but we don't know how are you using it. So, uh, what is your local environment, uh, local de development environment, right? Uh, okay, so we are using um, Devkinsta because a lot of our uh, uh, our clients are uh, hosted by by Kinsta. Uh, so, in our case, that's the best idea because we are sure that everything that we have on our local host will look the same on production. Uh, Kinsta offers as well uh, quite fine uh, tools uh, on, on their hosting, uh, but uh, let's focus for now for, on DevKinsta and maybe I will show you how it, how it works. Of course, I'm showing your screen. Okay. Here we go. Okay. So that's the main dashboard of, of DevKinsta and you can set up a new site with just one click here and it will download you the latest version of WordPress and do, do all the magic for you. Uh, I created a site for us uh, for today's webinar, and let's go there. As you can see, uh, it's using uh, Nginx because um, whole DevKinsta is uh, using Docker, so uh, so it's using uh, Nginx, and uh, you can change PHP version here uh, to check compatibility between plugins or teams with just one click on here to select uh, just one option from dropdown. And uh, you need to restart Nginx then, but uh, it's it's really easy. Uh, here you can um, enable or disable HTTPS uh, if you want to to check HTTPS and uh, linking of of your page on localhost. And you can enable or disable WP debug here, uh, but it won't work in our case because we are using uh, Bedrock, so we are using .env file, so so we need to omit this one. Okay. And uh, as you can see here, we got database manager as well. So if you will click here, uh, the unminer will pop up in, in your browser and you can edit everything here. So, so that's cool stuff as well. All right. So yes, this, uh, this looks uh, rather interesting and uh, it covers a lot of things. And uh, so let me guess, if you are using uh, DevKinsta for your local environment, Probably Kinsta will be your uh, your hosting of choice, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are recommending it for for everybody. Uh, that's because we got uh, fine tools there. Uh, for example, search and replace. We don't need to go to SSH agent and uh, type um, WPCLI, search replace, etc. You can do it uh, directly on Kinsta's page. Of course, you can do it because uh, Kinsta is installing uh, WPCLI. Uh, for all of hostings. Uh, another cool stuff is CDN. Uh, so all static files will be provided uh, very fast for, for the end user. So all CSS, JS, and images will be provided by uh, Kinsta CDN. Uh, the cool stuff is uh, also backups. Uh, so uh, you don't need to worry about uh, having some files corrupted or, or something like that. Uh, and the last, the last thing is probably uh, support, uh, which is uh, available 24 hours, seven days a week. So, uh, so that's important for the client. Yes. And okay. So mm, we have your local environment. We have your production environment and uh, staging too. And how do you migrate files between uh, those environments? Yeah. So. Um, as I said, we are using uh, GitHub. So every uh, new developer who is joining uh, the project needs to clone the repository from, from the remote repository. And uh, then uh, he's uh, ch using Git checkout to check out master branch and then creating a, a new branch uh, from, from the master branch. And uh, after doing some fixes or creating new features, he needs to push it to origin. And then he's uh, creating pull request uh, to master branch. And uh, after everything is checked by the senior developer, it's being merged to master and is being pushed to production. 
Okay, and uh, how are, how are the files uh, migrated from the environment to environment? Let me guess, you are not using uh, FTP by in, in a manual way. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. we are using uh, CI/CD, of course, and we are using Bodyworks. Uh, so uh, I will show you my uh, our pipeline in a while. Uh, okay. But uh, maybe let's uh, first uh, do some uh, tests and uh, create some okay. bug. Okay, and yes. So 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 so, 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 so let's imagine I am your client, right? I am yeah. your client. I am mad because I found a bug. So uh, what should I what should I do? Okay. So uh, first thing you need to do is uh, to create a ticket in your uh, Basecamp project and assign it to uh, our project manager, which is assigned to this project. And uh, then project manager is looking for the first available developer and uh, he's assigning the task uh, for him. And then the developer is cloning the whole repository to his local host. He's taking a database from, from production. And uh, after everything is done, uh, he may start working on, on, on this project on his local host. So let's imagine that. Uh, okay, maybe so I'll let me show you screen. screen, right? Yeah. Yes. We got a problem here. So the um, closing tag is missing here. So the comment is being pulled to opening body tag. And let's have a look how it looks like on our local environment and how it looks like on our staging environment. So let's refresh the page to be sure that it will appear there as well. So for those who are wondering this, uh, this strange la language you can see, it's Polish. Yeah, <laughs> uh, we can change it to, to English, of course. So let's, <laughs> let's move to English to not bother anybody. Okay, so we should have the same problem here on the English version of the site. And as you can see here, the uh, closing sign is, is missing here. Yes. So the first thing that we need to do is to check that we are on master branch. And everything is up to date. It's up to date. Okay, so we need to create a branch uh, here. Mm -hmm. It's going to be fix slash uh, missing closing uh, sign for the tag. It's going to be long, but yes, it's uh, it's quite quite a long uh, long branch name. Uh, yeah. But it will I will also up. ask you about this this fixed prefix uh, in a while, but first uh, let's okay. fix the bug because it's not working. Okay, so <laughs> we are currently now on our, our branch, I guess. Uh, yeah, uh, so uh, let's close this tag and check how it will look like on our local environment. And as you can see, everything is correct now. Uh, so uh, we can push this branch to, to the remote. Git status, uh, git add. Let's copy this one. Okay, and so everything is now on uh, origin there. And uh, let's have a look how it works in our GitHub repository. OK, so we can compare and pull request here. So we are comparing our branch to, to the master branch. Of course, uh, here is the title of our merge request. And we should uh, paste the Basecamp link here and add some short description uh, for the senior developer to be sure what we are doing here. And let's create a pull request. And as you can see, the only one file changed is the base tweak, which is used by all of our templates. And uh, let's merge this pull request. Let's imagine that we are senior developers. Everything is fine. And let's merge it to, to the master branch. Let's delete this branch because we do not have, we want to have mess on our repository. That's a perfect approach that I never learned, sadly. OK, and uh, let's go to Bodyworks. And uh, you can see our pipeline here. And we have something in red, so something yeah. is going on. That means that two new commits since last round appeared here. And uh, we can go there and check our actions. So the only actions that we have enabled is upload files to FTP, visual tests, and light health tests. Maybe let's run the pipeline, and I will 
talk a little bit about each of, of these actions. Okay. So uh, first action is uh, generating that env and that uh, access files, which is used uh, only once in our case because uh, we are not changing DB details or any HD access details. So that's the only uh, thing that is creating that uh, end files for, for our environment. The next thing uh, is uh, PHP uh, install and update plugins, which covers our composer install and composer update. Uh, it is downloading uh, the newest WordPress version or the one that you will decide in Composer JSON mm -hmm. and uh, updating other plugins uh, because we are not storing it in our GitHub repository, as I mentioned before. The next thing is compiling CSS and JS uh, files and compressing images. Maybe let's go there and let's have a look how it looks like here. Okay, so we are changing directory to our team directory. Uh, we are installing uh, all required packages and we are using npm run build here. Uh, we are using gulp uh, for, for doing this. And let's check the environment because cool stuff here is that we can change the version of Node here. And we can fully customize environments uh, that we are using here. So we can download globally gulp uh, ground CLI. So, so that's a cool stuff here. Yes, this is very useful, especially when uh, we are working with uh, either legacy, le legacy projects or uh, cutting edge projects where when we have to set a specific specific version of, uh, of of some library so so this 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 is perfect in in, in some case some cases yeah uh, so let's go to our pipeline once again and uh, two other actions okay. three other actions is that we are uploading files to our staging environment the next step is visual tests between a current screenshot and the screenshot from the pipeline that was run before and the Lighthouse tests. In the perfect pipeline and the production pipeline, we will have upload files to FTP of production at the, uh, the last step, as the last step. So in short, so. first you run everything, upload to staging, do testing on staging, and yeah. if everything is all right, then you are free to go to upload to it push. automatically to production. Okay. To push everything to, to production, yeah. So as you can see, currently we got some pink approval button here. So let's click approve and uh, we will check what's, what's the difference. Okay, as you can see, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the difference is the right image, which is uh, not the image to be honest, it's the animation. So as you can see, the first screenshot was taken in the other frame of, of this animation. So everything looks fine, containers look fine. And I guess that we can approve this and move forward. Yeah. So even if there is no, uh, even if there is a difference, uh, this is an acceptable one, and uh, it was something that we had to check uh, manually to to be sure that uh, it's not an error. Okay. So last step here is a lighthouse test uh, because we are checking it on and on to be sure that uh, our scores uh, didn't fall fall down, and that's important for our clients because uh, ours. Uh, our position in Google uh, depends on, on score of Google Speed Insights. So let's check how, how it looks like. Uh, so we asked yeah. um, Google API to check uh, performance, accessibility, and best practices and CEO. Uh, and everything looks fine. Performance might be better, but we will work on that uh, for sure in a while. Uh, OK, so uh, this is uh, how it looks like. Uh, if everything uh, went fine uh, here, uh, we will have upload files to FTP of production as well. So, Yeah, so, so let's check if everything went uh, all right. OK, uh, so let's check our staging version of the site. Yeah, and we got this sign here. So yeah, so so I can perfect. close my I can close my ticket. Everything is is all right now, and um, okay, I have uh, I have some questions about uh, because uh, installing uh, run running composer and stuff is something obvious, uh, but uh, about uh, about all, all those tests. So first, let's start uh, with the with the visual test. How hard is to uh, is to set up them? OK, so visual tests are being set up only with, uh, with the uh, one input field. So let me go there. And the only thing that you need to paste is uh, URL of your website that you want to test. You can add multiple ones. So uh, quite uh, quite fine thing 
here. Yes, all right. And uh, you same mentioned... Thing, uh, the... Same thing yes. uh, is about Lighthouse because uh, the only thing you need to do is to uh, paste a website URL that you want to test and uh, type some score values that uh, will uh, send will you some warning yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. if something went wrong. Yeah. Okay, and um, why are you testing uh, the Lighthouse score as a process? Because most of the time, uh, I think that... Uh, Many companies just uh, do this once in a week, in a month, and uh, okay. you are doing this every time with every every even smallest change. Yeah, so we are trying to do lighthouse testing uh, as often as possible uh, because uh, Google rules are changing uh, every week. So uh, we are trying to to cover all needs of our clients, and we are testing them on and on to be sure that uh, nothing was changed. And of course, if something will uh, will change, we will uh, work on having the scores uh, higher accordingly. Okay, so I think that's, uh, that would cover it. But uh, tell me, can we, can we test uh, something else? Like uh, what else yeah. means, uh, do you test sometime? Uh, sometimes we are using 404 tests uh, as well. So let me add this. I'm not sure how it's called. Okay, it's link validator. So um, the only thing you need to do here is as well uh, take the link and paste it in here in URL uh, input. And let's uh, set up that to be zero because it will take a while. It needs to go through all pages that are linked on, on specific page. So let's go with that zero, zero. And let's add this action. Let's remove, uh, turn off these actions to uh, to have it faster and just run this pipeline. So it will show us some uh, problems with 404 uh, if we will have some. Yes, this is, this. Uh, I mean, if I remember there was one plugin for, for, for WordPress that was doing this, but uh, many hosting companies has always marked it as uh, as a big no-no because uh, it was uh, really heavy on the resources. And uh, even here, you can see that uh, it takes quite a while and we are just testing uh, one page. But uh, with this approach, we don't have to worry uh, about our hosting being being mad at us. Uh, so so let's, let, let's wait. Uh, Let's let wait a moment. But uh, yes, uh, adding tests like this for sure makes uh, our deployments much more stable. We can be much more confident with the with the result uh, of our of our changes because um, we don't have to after after deployment check out everything manually. Oh, and here we go. Okay. We have so success. It looks like we got success here, so everything uh, looks fine, and we are sure that. Nothing collapsed here. Okay, so uh, so I think that uh, that that we got it covered. I uh, I think you un unraveled some some magic behind uh, awesome studios, awesome uh, deployments, right? Yeah. And uh, let's go back to one thing because uh, it, uh, it it was kind of interesting for me uh, when you are creating the the new. Uh, the new branch, yeah. use the pref prefix uh, fix. Uh, could you tell us a bit more about uh, your, let's call it Git flow? Uh, yeah, that's a simplified Git flow. Uh, and uh, we are using two prefixes. One is uh, fix and another one is feature. So uh, if something is uh, something, the new feature added by the client and client wants some new functionality, we are marking it as a feature. And if, of course, there is some bug, we are marking it as a fix. Um, this will let the senior developer, who is doing merge requests and accepting them or rejecting them, uh, take the higher priority on fixing issues than uh, implementing the, the new features. So it will help uh, the senior developers in, in this way. OK. Uh, so I think that we covered uh, most of the stuff. Uh, we will do a quick recap in a, in a moment because uh, we covered uh, quite a lot of things. Uh, but before that, uh, remember, if you have uh, any question to, uh, questions to Bartek, 
Uh, you can ask them using either YouTube or Facebook comments, and I'm really sure that Bartek is really eager to answer them all. So, uh, so okay, let's start the recap because um, uh, we were talking about the perfect flow of your of, of our WordPress application, and we cover a lot of things because we didn't just cover uh, CI/CD. We started with uh, with how the project is set up. So first of all. Uh, it's not vanilla WordPress. Uh, it's it's bedrock. Why? Because it's it's easier to keep it in in Git, uh, and also it's much easier for a for a new developer to set up the project. Because, uh, like you said, you even have a, bad a script. Bad script. Okay. Yes, that that will. Uh, so 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 it only requires uh, running one one file. And uh, in a few minutes, the developer should have this project uh, working on his local host. Next thing, uh, you are using Timber because uh, both um, front-end and back-end developers can work on the same website asynchronously. They don't have to worry about uh, working on the same files because probably backend developers will be working on some classes and uh, or on PHP files while the front end developers will be uh, working on CSS, JavaScript files and or tweak files which which are uh, the place where both worlds both worlds connect, right? Yeah, so we are avoiding uh, conflicts in our merging then. Yeah. After yes. the job is complete. Of course. Uh, next thing we learned that you are not afraid of new technologies, and uh, you are you are using Gutenberg, which is just like that, very cool. Because I'm I'm a really really big Gutenberg fa fan too, and um, we also talked a bit about WDCLI, but uh, it was easy to guess because as 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 you mentioned about writing though those bash scripts, so. Uh, using WPCLI and connecting uh, those uh, it with with some bash scripts, it's it, it's a really perfect perfect solution in, in your case, if, if if I can guess right. Yeah, yeah, that is true. Yes. Next thing, uh, a stable local host environment, which is Devkinsta in your case. Yeah. And uh, you are using it not only because it's stable and it's working. It's also compatible with uh, most of uh, your client's hosting, which is Kinsta. And you are using Kinsta because it's stable, it's fast, and it gives access to many interesting tools. Like and, uh, or place, yeah. Yes. And also, uh, I see that you didn't use it, but they have the really great. Uh, it's 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 still in in, in beta, uh, a really cool uh, tool for uh, for for benchmarking uh, slow actions. It's really it's really tremendous. I, I played played a bit with it, and it's really it's really great. And uh, okay, so we have this, and in the end, you connect everything using body. Uh, you automate. Uh, Whatever you can, you you don't only automate builds, but you only uh, you also added some some tests to make all all the deployments more stable and uh, and you can just deploy everything in a more confident way. Did I miss something? No, or... I guess that you covered everything that I said yeah. already. Yeah, so 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 as you see, uh, creating a perfect flow, it's not just about uh, using CI/CD. It's uh, there. There is a lot of elements. Oh, we forgot about one thing. We also forgot about uh, the the whole flow between project managers, clients. This is also the part of uh, of, of the perfect flow for for our our application. Okay, so. It's time for for some questions. Uh, first, we will start with the question that were uh, that were submitted to us uh, with, with with the registration. Uh, so let's start with the with, with question from Drew Douglas. How do you handle multiple WordPress databases on developers' local machines and turning them into one proper database on the staging site? Okay, uh, so uh, handling multiple WordPress databases uh, is probably a problem uh, for all of agencies and all of developers because uh, there is no such tool as 
uh, Git uh, for for databases. So the only thing that we can do is to use uh, WP Migrate DB plugin to uh, pull database from production, which uh, will in our case be the single source of true, and uh, to import it locally. And uh, then after some changes are made locally, we need to do them uh, once again on production. Unfortunately, there is no other way for now, as far as I know. Uh, the only thing that we are uh, making, I guess, faster is uh, exporting JSON files of our uh, ACF uh, field groups. And uh, we are pushing uh, them with uh, GitHub uh, to, to GitHub, uh, of course. And then we are synchronizing them on production, directly on production. They are being pushed to production FTP and uh, they are being synchronized on production. So we do not have to go there and uh, add all uh, field groups there separately. Okay, and uh, you mentioned uh, WP Migrate. So uh, it, it, it was created, uh, this plugin was created by Delicious Brains. And at some point, they even tried to create, uh, let's call it a Git repository for for database for WordPress. And even with their uh, tremendous experience, they just failed. They failed. They say it's, uh, at this point, it's, it, it's impossible uh, uh, in, in the WordPress environment. So... Um, so yeah, I think that the the approach that Bartek described is one of the most uh, of the most popular uh, when it comes to uh, to migrating database in some way. Okay, so uh, let's see what we have uh, what we have next. Questions from Carlos: Why use Timber instead of Sage? Is Twig the only reason? Uh, yeah, so uh, maybe I will try to, to explain that. Uh, all of our developers know Twig, uh, know Twig uh, and uh, uh, we are mainly using Twig because of that. Uh, and uh, the other reason is that uh, Sage is using uh, Blade templates. And uh, Twig is uh, more strict here, so we are not able to uh, use the whole uh, PHP uh, parts in, in, in Timber. And we can do it in, in Sage, uh, Sage, in this case, in Blade. So uh, in my opinion, that's the only reason why we are uh, using uh, Timber instead of Sage. Yeah, also I can uh, like drop a few, few cents here because um, I was the one, because I worked at Awesome Studio at some point, and uh, I, I was the one that uh, who uh, convinced the company to use uh, to use Timber. And yes, the the, the fact of strictness was uh, was was one of, of the reason. I mean, uh, there's nothing bad in Blade. Blade is uh, is also really cool. And uh, the only thing is, um, how to tell it. I was never a person who trusts other people. So uh, if we, if, if if Timber was uh, more strict, it was uh, it, it was the better approach, uh, especially at the time. Yeah, we are building uh, applications in Laravel as well in Awesome Studio, but we decided to use uh, use Timber for uh, for WordPress applications here. Okay. Okay, so um, let's see now something. Uh, what else do we have? Okay, uh, now we have a question from Sam Hogan. What is the future for WordPress development uh, and its competition? Okay, uh, so uh, hmm. WordPress currently uh, holds uh, nearly 50%, I guess, of uh, CMS market here. So in my opinion, there is no competition here. Uh, WordPress is uh, is the the most popular CMS for sure, and um, I hope that it, the whole community will grow, grow and uh, keep growing. Uh, so in my opinion, uh, there is no competition for WordPress in in this case. And what's the future in uh, for web development here? Uh, in my opinion, there are two ways. Uh, the first way uh, is to use headless WordPress. So uh, I guess that we will all uh, agree with that, that the dashboard is OK for clients, and it's quite user friendly. So uh, we will let clients uh, to do their job in, in, in dashboard. And uh, we will push it then with uh, REST API or, or GraphQL API to, to, to front end, which will be probably some JS framework 
for example, Next.js or, or something like that. So, so that's, that's the first way. Another way might be generating static files as you do on your project WPOs, which makes the site more much uh, lighter and uh, much faster for sure, because we are not asking DB on and on. So, so in my opinion, there are two ways of, of, of this. And it's much and it's much cheaper. This was the reason why I went into yeah. static. It, it yeah. was just cheap. <laughs> okay. And now, yes, hi, Piotr. I knew you would come up with something like this. <laughs> How do you handle core plugins, themes update? And if by using Composer update, how do you handle WP plugins update flow? Deactivate plugins before update because Composer didn't do it by itself. Okay, so uh, we are not only using uh, Composer uh, to, to do that. We are also using uh, Manage WP, which allows us to do a backup for our staging environment, for example, uh, right before updating the plugin. Uh, so it will do a backup before updating the plugin. It, it's called Safe Update. It's updating the plugin, then it's uh, uh, creating, uh, then it's pushing uh, the plugin to, uh, to the staging version of the site. And you can compare uh, screenshots as well. And if something went wrong, you can revert to the previous version or check if everything works fine on, on staging environment. And if we are sure that uh, everything works fine there, uh, we are uh, updating it in Composer, doing the same flow, and then pushing it to production. Uh, and that's all. We so are also of... reading change log to, to be sure that uh, nothing major changed there. So. Okay, so 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 you want to tell me that you are one of those company that that really does uh, this uh, because uh, before every update we can read uh, in almost on every plugin uh, make a backup backup before updating right and I never saw a person that was doing it and and also yeah. is one one of that that that, that is impressive uh, okay. Uh, and here is a question from Mike. Uh, what is the def difference between uh, WP Engines local and DevKinsta? Okay, uh, so to be honest, I didn't have a chance to uh, familiar familiarize with um, uh, WP Engine local. Uh, we choose DevKinsta because uh, a lot of our clients, as I said, uh, is uh, hosted in, in, in Kinsta. Mm, only a few of them is... Uh, hosted by WP Engine, uh, probably they are using the, the same thing. So probably they are using Docker. I'm not sure. So I don't want to uh, uh, mislead you. Uh, but uh, in my opinion, they are working in the same, uh, quite same way here. OK, and uh, here comes the last question. It's from Sylvian. Uh, how should you generate a static version of your website during uh, the workflow? Yeah, that's a probably a question for you because uh, you are generating uh, your your own project uh, to a static version. So yes, okay. Feel so free so, to so answer I, this question. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes. Uh, uh, so uh, overall, there are three approaches uh, to this. First of all. Uh, we are in the WordPress territory, so yes, there is a plugin for this. Uh, personally, I am a big fan of uh, WP to static plugin. It's it's really nice. It works. Uh, it just works. It just works with, with without any problems. Together with WP CLI and Buddy, uh, this is the approach I am using uh, for, for for my newsletter WP Owls. And I think that uh, if you are a control freak, this is really a, a, a a great tool to use because you have full control over the process. So, 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 so this is uh, this this is interesting. Uh, the second one uh, we can think about uh, using a service. Uh, we even had a webinar together with Nate Finch from Stratic about how to connect body with Stratic. So, uh, if you don't. If you aren't a control freak and you just don't care how this static site is generated, uh, I think that uh, services like Stratic uh, are a really great way to go. And of course, if you are not a big fan of uh, of PHP, um, there are lots of static site generators. You can use uh, Gatsby. You can use Next.js. Uh, of course, by connecting them with uh, with WordPress and um, 
uh, connecting them with WordPress uh, through either REST API or uh, GraphQL API. So, so those are three ways you can achieve this. Every every way uh, can incorporate uh, body uh, on its way. So so you can run tests. You can add uh, some staging sites before. It's it's, okay. it's really up to you. Okay, I saw that Mario Shatkowski uh, said that you can also use WPCLI, uh, WPDP import export for uh, database migration. Yes, we are using it uh, mostly uh, in this case. Yes, so we are using search replace uh, and uh, we are exporting and importing databases with, with this command. We are also turning off and turning on some plugins, uh, etc. So yeah, we are using WPCLI in, in our agency. It's also built in uh, Kinsta. So uh, you can uh, use, uh, just go to, to the client, uh, SSH client and uh, WPCLI is already there. So that's good stuff. And this is for me. Thanks, Mariusz. Uh, do you, could you provide a default WP setup library for a perfect Git, Git flow, for example, uh, GitHub master to the environment? Um, hmm. So uh, this is, uh, I, I think that I already have it set up. You can find my repository. It's called uh, WP Sasquatch. It's, it's bedrock together with, uh, with Timber and so on. You just uh, have to fill out the environment and, uh, and that's all. And run Composer, of course, and it will work. It's, it's, it's really simple as that. Okay, so um, I think we have we we are out of uh, we're running out of time. Uh, but I know that there were some more questions. We will try to uh, create an article soon, and we will try to respond uh, to them all because uh, they are really they are really interesting. Uh, so keep an eye on this. Um, thank you very much, everyone. Uh, thank you, Bartek, for. Uh, for spending some time with us. Uh, do you have uh, something to add before we, we wrap this up? Yeah, thank you for having me here. And uh, the only thing I want to add is uh, that we are looking for web developers. So if you want to join us, uh, join our team, feel free to go to awesomestudio.com and send us your uh, CV and uh, we will uh, stay in touch for sure. Okay, I, from, from my end, I can say that, I, I, like I mentioned, I had the chance to work there for a while. And so, so if you if you like Timber, if you like Bedrock, and uh, and you are not afraid of Gutenberg, it's a really nice place uh, place to work. Uh, so, uh, thank you all very much. It was it was a pleasure uh, meeting you. Of course, in a in a digital way. I saw that we had people from really around the world. I even saw someone from Mexico. So, so cool. really, we are. We are very happy that we that this webinar was so worldwide. And uh, what can I say? Thank you, and uh, I hope that we will see see each other soon because we are already working on on a new webinar. So uh, so follow us on Twitter, on Facebook, and on other social media. And uh, when it when the time comes, we will inform you about the new webinar. So. Thank you, everyone, and have a nice day. Or Thank night. you. Bye-bye.